Hey guys, welcome to my planty home. Imagine someone calling you up and saying, hey, wanna come over and look at my plants? Well, that's what we're gonna be doing today. And I'm really excited to show you everything I've got going on in my house right now because a lot has changed, like so much has changed. I can't even keep track of everything that has changed since I've done a plant tour. Like it's definitely time. Where should we start? We are going to start over here on one end of the house and then work our way to the other end. And I'm just going to show you each and every one of my little plants up close and personal and yeah, tell you about them. Things that are standing out, updates. I don't know, just really anything that's going on with them. How cute they look, because let's face it, all I ever say is, oh my gosh, I love it. Cute, so cute. Those kinds of things. Huge thank you to Mudwater for making this video happen. Okay, so Mudwater, it's a coffee alternative. It has four functional mushrooms with only a fraction the amount of caffeine as a cup of coffee. As somebody who really has an appreciation for routine and small little daily comforts, where I was drinking coffee every single day and I noticed a lot more anxiety in my day to day. So I have made little efforts to cut back on my coffee consumption, which is where mud water comes in. The reason that I've kept coming back to mud water for three years now is the fact that physically I'm less jittery, but also mentally I'm less jittery. Like I do just feel a lot more focus and clarity, which is one of the ingredients, lion's mane, is actually known to help with focus, but there are a whole bunch of ingredients here that each have their own little mental and physical benefits, which I love. I love a dual purpose product. You guys know that. <laughs> Plus it's Whole30 approved, 100% USDA certified organic, non-GMO, gluten-free, vegan, and kosher. Okay, so actually I was at my sister's yesterday. I brought mud water over there to share with her. I walked into her apartment and there was a tin of mud water already sitting on her counter. Turns out she's been drinking it for a while now and uh, she was really excited that they were sponsoring this video. To me, mud water tastes very earthy. I taste a lot of chai in it and also a hint of cacao, which is really good. I personally just add a little bit of honey and water into mine. I also like their creamer alternative, which is made out of coconut milk and MCT oil. Helps thicken it up a little bit if I want something a little more hearty filling. My sister actually likes to add vanilla, which she made for me yesterday, and that was so good. I'm definitely gonna start doing that more. There are a lot of different ways you can make this. And since their very beginning, Mudwater does donate monthly to psychedelic research. They believe that we're currently in a mental health epidemic and that psychedelic assisted therapy is one of the most effective tools we have to treat individuals. So I think that's really cool and really important. Now is a great time to see if Mudwater is a good fit into your daily routine because if you go to mudwater.com forward slash Harley G, you can get started for just $29. That's M-U-D-W-T-R.com forward slash Harley G. If you've tried mud water or you do end up trying it, I would really love to hear what your experience has been with them because it genuinely, truly is a small change I've made that I do think has had a direct benefit in a lot of areas in my life. So thank you, mud water. Let's get into it. Starting, oh, I guess starting right here. Um, oh, first plant is right here, which is this golden pothos, which this is such a simple, easy little plant that I love and get a lot of enjoyment out of. I just think it's in like the perfect spot for me to be able to enjoy it all the time, but also remember to care for it. You know, it's kind of a forgettable plant, but one that I really enjoy <laughs> when I pay attention to it. You know what I'm saying? It's getting quite long here. Golden pothos just really fill in any little corner in such a beautiful way. I love them, I love them. Right next door is probably my favorite piece of plant furniture of all time. It's an Ikea Vitzjo shelf, which I've had this in my life for about five years now. I loved it as much the first day as I love it now. Like it just looks good anywhere I put it and it can fit so many freaking plants. <sighs> This is not about the shelf, but I could go on about the shelf. I do keep a lot of my favorite plants here because it's easy access viewage. I spend a lot of time in the kitchen between, you know, my little <laughs> daily warm drink self-care or making meals for my family. So 
Throughout my day, it's just nice to glance over and see this beautiful plant display of some of my favorites. So bringing you in close, I would say these are a lot of my most talked about plants on my channel. So you probably recognize a bunch of them. Uh, we'll start from the bottom here. So these are, these are my Pilia peperomioides. This is the one, if you remember from a few years ago, I actually dropped the plant and it got a lot of damage here which is why my plant is so bent, but I just kind of let it do its thing and continue growing and it actually healed itself, which is so cool. Like, I love the fact that this plant has a little bit of a story, you know, and that's why it looks <laughs> so weird. Uh, just like, why? <laughs> it does have a few babies down there. Uh, and these next to it are also some of its babies. So this is actually just a cover pot, but all of these came from this mother plant, which is really cool. And it, again, these just look so weird. I love the little scrawny and poof thing in a plant, but I do plan to actually repot both of these this spring. I'm just waiting to find the perfect planter. I love this little combination setup right here so much. It's been hard for me to find something that I love equally, but in a larger size, you know? So, oh, and I love my little cherub goat planter here that I thrifted, also in a video. So cute! Love them. If you see a planter that you think would look good for these, please send it my way by all means. Give me the Etsy link because I am actively looking for something, but it seems to be slim pickings in the secondhand department. <laughs> Moving right next door. This is a Syngonium um, erythrophyllum. Yeah, outside of like sentimental factors, I think this may, this is my favorite Syngonium because it's just so lush looking and the coloration, contrasty coloration with the really dark tops and reddish purplish undersides. It's just so oh, moody, vampy. This is one I struggled with for a second there in the beginning, but I just think that Syngoniums are plants that take a lot of time and acclimation, but if you're able to get them like situated into an environment, they're going to grow pretty robustly. They just require a little TLC and dedication at first. For example, there are two new growth points popping out right here, which I'm only just now noticing for the first time. So that's really exciting, two of them. It's gonna really fill in right there. And I didn't even have to do any propagation for that. So yeah, sometimes all it takes is just freaking powering through the stressful first few months of having a plant and then it can take off. Like that's what's happening here. I was so stressed that this plant was on the brink of death, but clearly not, it's fine. Um, I will say this is a little bit of a thirstier, generally thirstier plant. One of the thirstiest plants on this whole shelf and maybe even my whole upstairs. Just a little note about that one. <sighs> Wow, <laughs> I'm like having to catch my breath after noticing those new growth points. <laughs> That's so exciting. This is the best part of being a plant keeper, you know, in the springtime when things really start to grow. Oh, Ooh, there's, there's no better filling. Next shelf up, this shelf does have a grow light above it. So I keep some more of my higher light loving plants and the ones down there that I just showed you are a little bit lower light tolerating, which is like perfect for this shelf. I have this Agave Solar Titan Nota. <laughs> it's solar something, solar eclipse Titus something which I didn't love in the beginning, but it is actually really growing on me. Currently have this living in a polymer clay planter I made, but it does need to be repotted because even though this is a succulent with the capability of storing a lot of water in its leaves. It is drying out so fast. I have to water this like every four days right now and it's just going to get worse in the summer. So yeah, I need to, I, I have I have planters available. I just <laughs> need to get around to doing it. This is a plant that has grown on me a lot. I considered giving it away or selling it for a long time there and I definitely will not be doing that anymore. Next to it is this little Sansevieria, which I actually have no idea of the ID. If you know, I would really appreciate it, but like, 
I don't know. Even though I don't know what this one is, I would say it's like up there with some of my favorite plants to display in my home. I think it's so cute. And mine just started out with a single, with this single plant. But in the last couple of years, I think it seems like each year it pops out a new baby. So I'm excited to see what this growing season will bring. I just love how that is filling in the pot, you know? Back here is my Ace Cananthus Thai Pink. Recently chopped it back because they were like hanging all over the glass and blocking light from the plants below. Growing back swimmingly, it actually seems like since I took those cuttings two-ish weeks ago, it has popped out a couple more new fresh little growth points. Like the plant suddenly had much more energy to <laughs> distribute to new growth, which was really an exciting little side benefit of doing that. So that's fun. Cute. There's that section. I try to like space them out so that they're getting light from the grow light, but the plants below are also getting light from the grow light. I just try to be a little mindful of that, although I don't know how much it's working. Well, it's working, they're growing. We're good. Next door, I'm actually gonna pull this one down and bring it a little bit closer because it has some exciting little updates. This is my Peperomia Hoffmanii. I recently also chopped this plant back because it was shading the Syngonium underneath from the grow light. And since chopping it back, it has popped so many new little growth points. Like they are seriously everywhere, especially up top here, which is really exciting to me because it is like a little bit sparse up there. I just think I wasn't giving this enough light for a long time, um, but now with the grow light directly above it, it's growing swimmingly as they say. <laughs> Do they say that? But minus, I'm saying it. I've seen a lot of comments about people wanting this plant or even having tried this plant and killing it off. And you guys, I figured it out. It wants so much light, but also so much water. This and the Syngonium down there, easily the plants I water the most in my whole house, like easily. So that's why they're on the shelf where I can keep tabs on them a little bit more because I do spend so much time in here. That is really exciting. So I hope it grows in like so much more full. This is one I'm like starting to consider a repot for. It's just drying out a little bit too quickly for me. It is one that I'm keeping mental note of as I thrift for a container to put this in. I think I might even move it into a container without a drainage hole uh, because it does need watered so frequently. I think that may help me keep up on the care of it. Like maybe it would grow a little faster if I could water it a little more spot on or have it hold water for a little bit longer. But yeah, overall a plant I've really, really enjoyed growing and I highly recommend. Highly recommend. Um, I did take cuttings of this for my oldest, bestest friend, Natasha. Um, she's the one that actually introduced me and Ryan to one another. She was my maid of honor. Yeah, we've kind of reconnected lately, which has been really nice, but she told me she wanted some cuttings of this one. So I am propagating some cuttings for her, which we will get to in a minute. Next door, we have this, which up until recently was a no ID fern for me, but it's actually a whisk fern. It is so cute. Um, it was a plant that just popped up somewhere down in my grow tent and I was like, hey, I'm gonna pot that up and see if I can grow it. Well, success. It's grown. I think it's really cute. This is one I don't have with a drainage hole because it is kind of thirsty. Not the most thirsty, but definitely pretty thirsty. Actually, it needs to be watered. This one does not like to dry out at all. Oh no, did you guys see that? Damn. If you saw that, that's rude. <laughs> Ah, just kidding. We're good. We're good. We're good. Like it never even happened. I'm going to move it over here, but this is my Euphorbia Lactea Crested something. This is actually a plant that Ryan bought for me. It was one of those ones that was growing in those glued down rocks from the big box store. And it's one of my best performing videos, like taking this out of that and trying to grow it. But... I don't know, we've been having some issues. Like it hasn't done anything and it barely has any roots. So I recently repotted it. I've been trying to water it a little more and we will see what happens. Hopefully it appreciates this grow light light. 
hopefully. Oh, you guys, this is the weirdest thing. It kind of got this weird little wound. I moved it here, I repotted and moved it here and it kind of got this weird little hollow wound. So I don't know if the plant is like rotting out or what is going on, but yeah, that's hollow. So when I spray this plant off in the sink, I have to be kind of careful to avoid that area so it doesn't rot further, but I don't know. Let me know if you know what that is. And this is a terrarium. I am going to take the lid off so it can be a little less humid, hopefully. So you can see. <laughs> oh, it smells fresh. That's always good. I love taking off terrarium tops and smelling like fresh nature instead of mold. Uh, I did put isopods in, or not isopods, spring tails in here. So they're definitely keeping it clean. Oh, I'm so happy with this. It has grown in so much. If you watched my original video, need to chop a few things back in there, but this is actually live sphagnum moss, which is so exciting. I love when the moss resurrects and starts to grow like that. So I just love this little terrarium thing. Um, yeah, again, just <laughs> trying to arrange them in a way that allow for the syngonium underneath to get grow light. Dad texted me, have you eat? <laughs> Let's just plan on tomorrow then. We'll, we'll, we'll stop at Bella's and get... We're not like time crunch has to be at this time. Well, so. Let's just plan on six and we'll just play it by ear. Okay, perfect. Yay. So, yeah. I'm glad. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, well, we'll. Okay, you too. We'll see ya. Bye. The next shelf up is definitely a little bit more cluttered, but some things are temporary here. Starting over here, we have a. I'm really trying to get better at these Sansevieria names. Specifically, this growth pattern type Sansevieria are quickly becoming some of my favorite plants. This one is actually a little bit thirsty and I can tell how because these leaves are tacoing a little bit, which shows me it's a little bit dehydrated. So, this is also grown in a pot with no drainage. This is a hill I will die on. Your plants don't necessarily need drainage like some people claim. Behind that, we have another Sansevieria, Masoniana something. No, yes, no, I don't remember. This is one that I am kind of being a little bit mindful of because it has been a while since it put out a leaf. This is the most recent leaf it has put out. I don't know, maybe something is up. I did pot it a little bit weird. So a little bit of the like plant rhizome is above the soil, which maybe was not a good decision on my part. So this is one I'm considering repotting. When the right planter pops up, I'll definitely be repotting this. I do also think it's thirsty. I'm just gonna water all of my plants after this because clearly a lot of things are thirsty right now. <laughs> This is the other shelf that has a grow light. So just two grow lights total here. I'll link the grow lights I use. If you wanna know how dedicated I am to these grow lights, I <laughs> super glued this up here. So it's like stuck. I will have to put in a lot of effort to remove this if it ever dies, but it's worth it to me because this fell down so many times. I tried like duct taping it up here and using 3M strips up there, like a variety of 3M strips up there. Nothing worked except the glue, super glue, which has held on for a few months now. So I'm feeling confident about it. Even if it falls down at this point, I'm like, okay, that was time well spent doing that because it held for that long. The duct tape and all of that, no. <laughs> I have this little pinguicula. Oh my gosh, I know what this one is. This is a pinguicula that I recently potted up into, you guessed it, a thrifted planter. <laughs> it did kind of sink down a little bit because I didn't wet the substrate before potting it up, but that's fine. Like it still looks really cute. And I also put a lava rock in there that you can't even tell anymore because it has sunk down so much, but it caught a fly, a little fungus gnat and seems happy. So yeah. <clears throat> Uh, this is my dog, Axel. This is my cat, Tungu. Axel died last year, a little over a year ago, and Tungu died two years ago. She was 21 and he was 12. 
So, I mean, they were old, but it was still sad. Anyway, on top of them, <laughs> it's weird to say, my little mini burrow's tail, which I've propagated from scratch. It is still really, really small, but love to see the fresh stems. Like I only put two little of the um, leaves in there and then I've just kind of allowed it to grow on its own. And this is what we have. This literally was just two leaves, no roots or anything. So that's pretty cool. It's been fun to see the progress in the, in this one. It'll be really fun when I'm like an old lady and this plant is huge and I can be like, this is what it started out as. That's gonna be so cool. I'll be the coolest old lady around you guys. I've been preparing for that my whole life. <laughs> I think my brain might be fried because I cannot remember the name of any of these Sansevieria. Oh, this is a Sansevieria Cinta. Sansevieria Cinta, and I'm growing this. This is one I will be repotting this year, but it's currently growing in this little polymer clay planter, which Alex, whom I actually went to college with in Wyoming, made for me and sent to me. It is a hanging lantern. I have had this hanging before, even the, the Sansevierian. I thought it was really cute. Yeah, it needs to be repotted like desperately, so, and also watered. Surprise, surprise, they all need to be watered, okay? I'm a little bit behind in life. Next to it, in a acrylic monomer dappen dish. <laughs> That's literally what this is. I got this when I was going to school for nails. <laughs> but now I'm like, hey, planter, opalescent planter for my little succulent propagations. Yeah, propagated the Sansevieria. So small, and another one that when I'm an old lady and it's like 10 feet tall, I can be like, yeah, it started out this big. <laughs> and I love that, it's so fun. Yeah, this right there. No drainage hole. In front of all of that is kind of random. This is an avocado pit. Here is what we have going root wise. Look at that fresh little white one. But we do have a little growth point. I may pot this up soon. I don't know, what do you guys think? What would be your next step if this is was your avocado pit? Huh? Um, here is the, a, the Syngonium erythrophyllum, phyllum, eh, the Syngonium erythrophyllum cutting I took very, very recently. No roots or anything yet. And it is pretty droopy, but that's to be expected with that plant. Oh, I also put a variegated heart leaf in here, which I totally forgot about, but this is where the bulk, this is where I'm propagating those Peperomia Hoffmanii cuttings for my friend Natasha. Oh, they're getting roots. They are getting roots. You see those tiny little roots? That's exciting because it's been a few weeks now and it kind of seemed like they weren't doing anything for a second. But hey, we finally have some root growth. So I feel a lot better about that situation. Gosh, sometimes it just takes so long. And okay, this might be one of the most sad plants in my collection right now. I have no idea what's going on with it. It just keeps yellowing and yellowing and then kind of doing this weird browning thing. I might have overwatered it at some point, but um, actually, you know, I think it might be stressed because I did cut this plant back. I actually, my mom came over and I gave her <laughs> some cuttings of this. And now all of a sudden my plant is really, really sad. Whereas before it was really happy and growing a lot and putting out new growth points. So I do think I might've cut a little bit too much off of it. That is definitely something to be aware of when taking cuttings, which I am very not aware of, clearly. Oh, this is a nice little Crassula ovata update, growing so cutely, so yeah, love that. So cute, so cute. I'm excited for that to get really big because you guessed it, when I'm an old lady, blah, 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 blah. And next door is this succulent, this Sansevieria. This is the one that I propagated into that small little opalescent um, dappen dish. So these two, mother, daughter, cute. Um, but I really like this. this. This one shows a lot better the growth pattern of Sansevieria. I like, like how they grow like a tower kind of, like they take up minimal space, but they make a real impact because they grow like that. <laughs> I made this planter in a video and I think it's a really cute little combo. I put some pieces of perlite or no pumice up here 
and I think it's cute. Right there, you can see that like those like uh, vertical wrinkles. That's how I know this plant is thirsty. Mm -hmm. Is that helpful? I hope that's helpful for you to see, to like be able to tell. I don't know. I don't know, okay? They just start to get a little brain-like when they're thirsty. Um, let's move back a little bit. And here is my Dancing Bones Cactus. Still love it as much as ever. It bloomed this spring, which was really exciting. And it also, pot, or no, not this spring. It bloomed this fall, winter. Um, and it also popped out this new stem, which was really exciting to me because I want this to get so massive, so huge. And especially so that, especially when it blooms next year, it'll just be a sight, you know? Well, as it ages, oh, the um, stems, cork which is when they start to look like this wood here and i love the look of that i just think this is the coolest little plant it is starting to get a little bit top heavy so um especially when it's dry so i put these pebbles up here because this one is pretty like well it's not top heavy because it hangs down but the plant itself is heavier than the pot especially without these rocks and even with the rocks right now it's a little bit iffy this is one I need to repot, but where it hangs like this, I'm just having a hard time deciding what to put it in. That's like my biggest struggle with any plant. It's hard to commit to a planter that I know is gonna work for long enough for it to be worth repotting it into. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I do really, really love this plant. It is starting to wrinkle also. I'm gonna shut up. I'm not even gonna mention when my plants are thirsty because clearly, 75% of them are thirsty at the moment. <laughs> this is my variegated heartleaf philodendron. Pretty. It has grown a lot this year. And uh, if I'm being honest, this is a plant that kind of lives in the background of my mind. Like I don't really pay <laughs> too much attention to it, but seeing all of this fresh growth definitely gives me some endorphins at the end of the day. That's what it comes down to. And I do really enjoy growing this plant because yeah, like it lives in the background of my mind for a reason because I don't have to be thinking about taking care of this plant constantly, which is something I really appreciate in a plant. Don't get me wrong, tinkery plant chores are so fun, but I don't wanna constantly be stressed about the state of my plants or like this needing to be done and this needing to be done and this and this and this and this, you know, this plant definitely, I mean, that's kind of all of the plants in my collection, honestly, but um, yeah, yeah, it's a good little plant. <gasps> my mic just fell in the dog water. Oh no, what do I do? Hello? Seems fine. Uh. Well, let me move my tripod. Ooh, you, let me get out of the way. There, that's there. And next up is my Ikea terrarium. This is definitely, this is definitely the section of my house that has the most plants because I am in this area like the most often. So it makes sense to have the most plants concentrated here other than my office, which we'll get into actually at the very end of this video. But yeah, this is my most planty, earthy feeling section because there's just so many plants. Okay, cabinet terrarium, which I've had set up for almost a year and a half now. I've done two videos on it and then some updates in between. But you guys, I love this thing. I have so many more humidity loving plants growing in here that I never would be able to grow outside of this cabinet. Like this begonia picturata, this is actually Ryan's plant that I take care of, but I have not been able to grow this in any environment other than in this cabinet. I have some begonia negrosensis, uh, philodendron varicosum, philodendron sodoroi. <laughs> this is a white princess and mint adansonii, mark gravia sintonesii, which goes all the way down there, piper sylvatica, begonia darth vidariana, like so many, I'm not even gonna go through individually plant by plant in here because I've already done that in those videos I mentioned 
before about this terrarium, but I love this thing. It does require a lot of maintenance. I'll be so honest with you. It's not just something that I can just like leave and ignore for a week at a time. I definitely need to be visiting this every day or every few days at least, but I love it. It's worth it to me as a plant lover for sure. And it's awesome. I can lock it away from my toddlers. And on the top, I have a golden pothos and a Hartley philodendron, both of which are super easy, low maintenance, kind of low effort, low thought plants that make any little section just look more filled in if it's kind of empty looking. Yeah, that's what I love those kinds of plants for. They just really fill them in with minimal effort. Oh, and this all is, this is a little thrift haul from yesterday when I went to my sister's, like I was telling you about in the mud water section of the video, but yeah, this is all what I found. I'm gonna do a video soon, like uh, showing you how I style these maybe, or like what I pot up into them because, well, those ones, I don't know. I don't know, okay? You'll probably see these again soon on my channel. One of my favorite little plant display hacks is my plant light. None of these have drainage holes, so I can just kind of water them a lot at one time and not have to think about them for a really long time. Like I maybe water these once a month right now, but doesn't that just look so planty? And it was a really, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. It was a really easy way for me to integrate more plants into my home and kind of bring them upward. For me anyway, I like to live in a very planty filled kind of jungle-esque home and bringing plants up high like this kind of gives the illusion of their, well, I mean, it's not an illusion because it's the truth, but it kind of gives the illusion that the room is full of plants from top to bottom, even though it maybe isn't. This section of my house, doesn't it just look so planty because there's plants from top to bottom? And that's what I'm going for. Oh, look at my little model. My little model. I'm now standing directly in front of the Ikea terraria, but this is what the rest of my house looks like. And again, like I love bringing plants up high because I feel like it, it, even though there's like not that many plants over there, it looks like there's a lot of plants because they're up high because this one's huge. And then, you know, my lamp plant stands. This one here that kind of separates the dining area from the living room area is my spathlophyllum. I originally thought that this was a spathlophyllum sensation and then somebody corrected me in the comments of a video where I said that and told me what it actually is. And I cannot for the life of me remember or find that comment. So if you know what kind of uh, spathlophyllum this is, please let me know. And okay, I know it doesn't look great right off the bat. It's killing off a few leaves, but A, it's thirsty, surprise, surprise. B, it did just push out like three blooms all at one time. So I just think it kind of allotted a lot of energy to that. I definitely need to fertilize all of my plants for the springtime. Maybe we'll do that in an upcoming plant care day vlog. We'll do like a springy plant prep video. So stay tuned for that where we, you know, do all the springy stuff. But yeah, there's one, two, three dried blooms going on up here. And even though it's looking a little bit sad down there, there are still quite a few fresh leaves coming in um, and newly unraveled leaves. So I still feel pretty good about it. This is one of the few plants in my collection that I actually rotate pretty consistently because it gets light from just to the right of where you're viewing from and also the windows just right here. So it does stretch toward the light a little bit. So I'll just give it a little turn every, you know, week, two weeks to hope to help it grow a little more evenly. Honestly, I just didn't know where else to put this plant and I am considering moving it somewhere else in the house. We'll see. I, I do like it because I like to have a variety in every way of plants, like size, growth pattern, leaf shape, all those sorts of things. And this is an easy plant to buy big for inexpensive um, versus a lot of the other plants in my collection, which I just have to buy small because it's not in the budget to buy large specimens. So this is a good plant to start big with, I think. Yes. 
so, so now we are facing to my living room and over here. And okay, you know what? Actually, we're gonna do this little section first because there's more over there. Let me grab ya. I have a on the mantle, philodendron adaba poency, which I'm definitely going to have to move this one soon, but my plan is waiting for wall shelves to be put in. But before we do that, we have to find our countertops for these cabinets down here, but we're having issues with the place we chose countertops from. So it's just been a whole headache. It'll be worth it when it's done, but moral of that story, I will be moving this philodendron adaba poency onto those shelves once they're completed. I'm really excited for that. I think it's gonna be so cute. This is just a weird little plant. It is very, very, very dry. And this is one that does not like to dry out too much in between waterings. So I'm going to take it to the sink right now to give it a really thorough soak. Um, cute, and especially as these mature, I love the growth pattern. You can see they get kind of long, skinny little leaves like this. I love the look of that. I think I need to find a saucer that's a little, you know what, I have one. Right now, it is in this, which does not hold very much water at all. I'm gonna move it into this, because it'll hold so much more water. Like so. Oh yeah, that'll be so much better. Let me water it. This one like desperately needs it. This saucer definitely doesn't look as cute as that other one with the patinaed terracotta, but at least the plant will be watered until I'm able to repot it, but I don't want to repot it until those shelves are done. <sighs> you know how it is. Trying to get things how we like them. Okay, of course, this is my Dracaena marginata, one of the newest plants to my collection, which I did buy big, and this was definitely a splurge, but Ryan actually bought it for me, which was really sexy of him, <laughs> if you ask me, but yeah, I love this plant. Um, unfortunately, one of the stems broke as it was being loaded into my car to bring home, but it is what it is. I'm actually kind of considering trying to make, oh my gosh, there is a growth point, you guys. <gasps> that is so exciting. <laughs> Thank you, Grandma. <laughs> anyway, yeah, there is a growth point, so that's really exciting. I was kind of considering trying to make the top of this into a lamp but if it's going to pop out a growth point like that like i'm not going to argue i'll let it pop out its growth point and i'll find a lamp to put on my shelves that's so cool um i love this thing i hang little trinkets and knickknacks from here i have my bell from thailand hanging here it also doubles as the bathroom door unlocker when it accidentally gets locked, when we accidentally get locked out of it. And then over here, I have some charms that a subscriber sent to me. So I think it's so cute. I love this. It does need a little bit of maintenance, especially. I have these little macrame cords like holding the stems together because it is a little bit unruly. And if those weren't tied up, these branches would hang all the way down on the couch, which I don't want. So yeah, I just haven't had the time to do the fishing line and nylon thing. Definitely something I'm unaware of and I don't love the look of this, but for right now it does the job and it doesn't like cut into the stems the way fishing line would, even though fishing line would look a lot crisper. I love this thing though, like the wavy stems are so cool to me. Again, it's the wonky plants, you guys. Just love them. I just love them. It is in a huge pot. Like, I think this is, I haven't measured it, but I think this is 14 inches. Maybe it's 12 inches. It's 12 or 14 inches, but it's a huge plant. Like, seriously, a huge plant. But behind that, on the windowsill, I have a couple more succulents. So right here is my coral fire aloe. You can see my chickens out here. <laughs> Anyway, this is my coral fire aloe and I love this plant. Although it is looking a little bit wonky, 
at the moment. It looks like I maybe rotted it out, but it might be getting new roots. You see, you see those little light spots? Those look like fresh roots, but it also looks like the rest of the plant is like kind of withering away a little bit. Um, my camera isn't quite picking. Oh, look, there's a little root. What is going on here? I don't know. Okay, maybe I need to backfill it a little bit better. I don't know. This is a weird plant, but I love it. This is one of those little $2.98 succulents you can buy at the big box stores. And that is where this came from. So yeah, like it doesn't look like much right now, but when I got it, it was like so small, you guys, like maybe this tall, which is so fun for me to think about how far it's come. I think it's pretty cute. And I love the coloration. And right next to it, I have another little Sansevieria that I don't know what kind it is. It's another one that is filling out this tiny little pot so nicely. This is from Teeny Pots. It's the same person that gave me those little plant tags I showed you hanging on my Dracaena earlier. It'd be cool if another one grew out right here to help fill it in or even right here or over here. But I love the way these Sansevieria just kind of fill out. That looks so nice. Ugh. Yeah. On this little bar stool that I thrifted. And you guys, you know what's crazy? This is like total side note, but it is like a very, very close match. The fabric up here. You see the like pinks and greens and blues and slight yellows is like a very identical match to this rug I somewhat recently put into this room. I love that kind of grandma floral tapestry type look, but yeah, on top of the shelf, or not shelf, on top of this stool, I have my Cebu Blue. Truly, it was taking up like this whole section of floor and I couldn't even vacuum because the vines were just growing every which way and I didn't wanna suck them up. So cut it back so it wasn't touching the floor anymore and it seems so much happier having to water it a little bit less. It seems like actually every stem I cut is throwing a growth point, which is exciting but also like what is the next move you know like is this one that i move onto those shelves once they're completed maybe on this side and let them cascade down i don't know but i need to figure something out because it's getting dire to the point that i'm gonna have to put it in an equally big planter as the dracaena right now it is in a 10 inch and it's quickly outgrowing that. I don't have to do very much care-wise for this. It doesn't need a lot of light, isn't very much a heavy feeder, and it just grows so freaking prolifically. So I love it. I think it's an awesome plant. On the other side of the mantle is my philodendron micans, which is hanging a bit too low, and I do need to chop back because my kids kind of run into it every now and then and it's a little bit stressful. I don't know, it just looks so cute hanging down like that right there. Like it really, really fills in. Even though it's such a small kind of skinny little looking plant, it like really makes an impact right there. So I love it. It is also a thirstier plant. I water it so often. I'm gonna be so honest with you right now because this sounds so shitty of me, but I don't actually like care for this plant very much philodendron micans like yeah i love a hangy plant don't get me wrong i have them all over the place but it's more so because they'll kind of fill in wherever i put them not necessarily because of like the plant itself i mean that okay no i like really like the plant i just think this one i like more because of its placement not so much because the plant itself you know what i'm saying I do feel like sometimes finding that perfect placement is the difference between liking a plant and hating a plant. But it's hard to find the perfect placement. So when I do, I'm like, I worship you. So thirsty, so freaking thirsty. <laughs> and my last few plants in this room are here. I have a global green pothos just in this little, it's kind of a Parisian planter, which I really like. I saw this kind of thing all over France when I visited. 
uh, which is what possessed me to buy this. I don't know, it just reminds me of my trip there. And that's, I think really that the planter plant combo is what is really making me love this right there. It just reminds me of my trip there with my sister with which I went with Ryan and my sister and it was so fun. I didn't quite appreciate it at the time because I was going through some things, but now this planter reminds me of how beautiful Paris was and all of the balcony plants. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, the balcony plants. Again, with the like tiered plant system, kind of trying to bring them up. I have my plants in floor lamps, which I have done a video on. So this is a philodendron Brazil, which is another one of my oldest plants. Yeah, I love the like staggered height plant thing. I just think it makes a room look so much more jungle-esque. I've said that, but it really is because that's how I feel. I love when there's just a plant at every different height in every different view. You know what I'm saying? So there is my spider plant, which has so many little babies hanging down and I'm really excited to see this thing get huge. I assume I'm just now realizing I haven't watered this plant in like three weeks and it is so dry, but it still looks great. Love the spider plant and yeah. Yeah, those are my, that's my, oh, we're, one more. Last plant in this room is definitely the saddest. This is my, this is my philodendron postazanum, which I don't actually, I don't actually love this plant like at all. It's one I'm getting rid of, which is why it's sitting right here. I just need to take some pictures and sell it on Facebook Marketplace. I think it's cute, but this is actually a crawler and I didn't really prepare it to be a crawler. So it's just kind of growing, even though that's not naturally how it grows. It's just barely surviving, I think. So I need to get rid of it. It's just not looking its best. Even though it has so many leaves, it just, I don't know, it's just not filling in. So this one will be leaving my collection soon. Let me get my Coke. Oh shit. No, I gotta say, be skinny, be skinny, be skinny. Oh, it's right there. <sighs> Welcome to my bathroom. This is the multi, this is the boys bathroom or the bathroom people use if they come to our house for whatever reason. Um, yeah, we got a few plants in here and I do have GE full spectrum bulbs in my light fixture up here. So these plants do get a little bit of full spectrum light from these bulbs. It's only when people come in here to use the restroom or the kids take their baths, we flick the light on and they get just like a, probably a couple of hours of, of it a day, if that. But yeah, it seems to be helping the plants to just grow that much better. You know, it was a small little thing I did, I think that really made a difference in being able to keep plants in this bathroom or not because this is the only window here and it's pretty close to our neighbor's house. It's east facing. The light it puts out just really isn't that much. I really can only have plants right here if it weren't for the grow bulbs. Uh, so I don't know, just a little plant hack for any of those rooms where it's a little bit iffy if plants could be living in them. Anyway, upright lemon lime philodendron. This is the plant, like if anybody comes to our house, this, and maybe the Dracaena marginata out there are the two plants people comment on the most because this is so vibrant, pretty neon. The new growth especially is very neon. Um, all the stems are currently putting out new leaves, which is very nice. Low effort, high reward plant in my opinion. I have mine in a 10 inch planters, uh, a 10 inch plastic planter, so it doesn't dry out very much. I'm watering this maybe at once every like two weeks or so and seems to be doing well. Seems to be doing well. Okay, over here we've got a few more. Take a little swig. This is my Euphorbia trigona variegated. <laughs> a little bit of a weirdo, but I love it. It is corking down at the bottom here, which I love when that happens. I mean, I think it's doing okay. I think it's doing okay, but it is a little bit weird. So I don't know. 
I'm doing my best with it. I am trying to water this more frequently because I feel like euphorbia are generally thirstier plants and I would love for this to put out leaves. Like you can see up top here, there are some little dried up teeny tiny little leaves there. There and like, they're so dry that if I even touch it, it just falls off, you know? <sighs> I'm trying not to let that happen though by watering it more frequently, but it's not working. So if you know how I can keep these leaves growing big, like how they're supposed to grow, I think they're supposed to be like this big compared to the plant. Let me know, I would appreciate it. I would appreciate some help on this one. There we go, let's water it more. Maybe it needs more humidity, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so this is my ficus umbilato. I love the shape of this thing. I'm really excited for this to get big. Like, look at that leaf, isn't that pretty? Ooh, ooh, that's a good leaf. I love a good leaf and that's a good one. I do really enjoy the shape of this one. I think it's so cool and different. And like I said, I lack variety, so this one is nice. I say what one I have to water pretty often, like I think it comes off like it's kind of a bad thing, but I don't mean it that way at all because I'm someone let me know if you're the same way, but I love to stay busy. Like I don't just like to be sitting on the couch watching TV or twiddling my thumbs. If I have a spare second, I want to be watering my plants or I don't know, whatever it is. I want to be doing something. So plants like this that need watered a little more often are actually really fun for me and something I need to have in my collection. Otherwise I'd get bored with my life. <laughs> as busy as it is, I'd get bored if I had any more spare time than I do. And in front of it is a Stephania erecta, which we are currently struggling. It has a little bit of green right there. And I've tried to keep it a little bit more dry and a little bit more cold through the winter with a little bit less light so that now that it's springtime, it would really just like burst off, although it kind of hasn't. This thing has been sitting here like this for such a long time. So we'll see what happens. If you have any recommendations for this, I would like so appreciate them. Very, very new to codex plants. So I'm not really sure what I'm doing, but I just kind of tried to stress it a little bit through the winter to see if we could promote growth this warm grow season. We'll see. I just barely moved it here. It actually lived in the shower of this bathroom in a dark, mm, kind of cold shower shelf corner. This one, to be precise, I had it sitting like this. All winter, very low light, very cold with all the tile around it. We'll see, we will see. Fingers crossed. On my windowsill, I have I some I like a month ago actually I moved this. What is this? This is a freaking Euphorbia milii. That's what it is. And I added some pebbles to the top because it was drying out way too fast. Adding the pebbles was just a little move on my part to help have to water it a little bit less. It also needs to be up potted because I think it's, I think the roots are probably overtaking this pot. So you may see this soon on my channel being repotted only once I find the perfect thing, you know, and that's the struggle. Like it's so hard for me to find the perfect pot for my plants because I have something very specific in mind, but I'm not gonna buy something new when I could just thrift it for like $3 or six because prices are crazy. Mm. I'm going off. It's weird shaped. It's different shaped than anything else in my collection. I love the, I don't know, there's just something about it I find really satisfying, like how menacing and dangerous it looks from the back. But then from the front, it just looks so plush and pretty, especially, oh, especially with these blooms up top. Those are probably the whole reason I keep this plant in my collection. Otherwise, I may find this plant a little bit boring but it is a constant, constant bloomer for me. So if you want some more 
blooming colorful plants. This is one I can really recommend and the leaves sun stress very easily. Like you can see these leaves are pretty red and kind of goldish, orangish. Oh yeah, very easy str sun stressor. If you're trying to add some color into your plant realm, your plant paradise in your home. <laughs> Oh, should I tell you about this? Okay, so this is totally off topic, but have this little elephant sitting right next to the euphorbia I just showed you. And I got this at the floating markets in Thailand. Um, I was like bartering with one of the shop people. I was bartering with her and we couldn't come to an agreement, but she was so kind and just was like, I'm gonna give this to you, which was so, like really, it meant, a, it's just a little tiny, little maybe $1.50 elephant. This elephant means so much to me because that was really kind of her. Even though we couldn't come to an agreement, like, I don't know, tears are coming to my eyes because it meant a lot to me. People are so nice, you know, wherever you go, people are so nice. It just, it's just a matter of taking the opportunity to get to, get to know them. I'm getting off on tangents, but yeah, I had to tell you about that. I'm so annoyed at myself for getting teary-eyed every single video. Why am I so emotional? Why? What? That was so nice of her. Anyway, next to the Euphorbia, I have a Ripsalis Cruise. I don't know the name. It needs watered very, very often, which is why I have it in such a deep saucer. Um, it is one I'm also going to be repotting. Granted, I find the right planter for it because I just want it to be just right. I'm just kind of moving on from the plain terracotta planters, I think. Finding the right planter is as much of a hobby to me as like collecting plants is. So, that is what I am on the hunt for as I go thrift shopping, like little planters for these kinds of plants. And the last plant I have in here is this Rickrack cactus, which I have in this Mipa's Pots and Plants hanging UFO planter. I think it's so beautiful. I get so many questions about this thing if I still have it set up, and yes, I do. Seems to be doing well because it has put out new growth points since I potted it up, and I just take it down to water every week, two weeks or so. Um, and yeah, very, very low maintenance, very, very high impact. It's so cool. It kind of looks like a little jellyfish or octopus or something, and I love it. I love it. Oh, I said that was the last plant in here, but it's actually not. Right there, I have a sport variegated monstera. And yes, this is sport variegated, although the variegation on this one is very, very muted. So this leaf is the most variegated at the moment. Um, it's kind of the lime greenish one. Yeah, speckled kind of throughout. The new leaf has it just a teeny tiny bit up here, um, but it is very, very muted, but I love it. So it is a really big leafed plant and I think it looks pretty nice growing here. It gets some natural east facing light as well as the grow lights and it's doing okay i this is one i literally moved into here yesterday because i had this really cute little dracaena marginata that i got at the big box when i ended up with the eight foot facebook marketplace dracaena you just saw in my living room i gave that one to my sister and it looks perfect in her space so i'm really happy with my decision and i moved this monster into here so hopefully it starts putting out a little more variegation this room is very humid because my kids bathe in here almost every night it gets humid it has really good natural sunlight and also a little bit of supplemental full spectrum grow bulb grow bulb light so here's hoping we're pretty zoomed in on it because i'm not trying to like invade my kids privacy but this is in Kai's bedroom. This is a Hoya Polyneura. It's a little bit offset from this south facing window, which I just closed the curtains of, but 
Oh, you guys, I am so sad because I moved this thing up here thinking I had gotten rid of all the mealybugs and all of a sudden there's mealybug babies all over it. So I just like four days ago treated it with Bonide systemic granules. And I'm hoping this will be the last treatment. This has been such a pain in the booty. Oh yeah, it looks like everything's dying. So yes, I think I'm going to win this one. I'm really, really glad I moved it up here because otherwise these bugs would have just been spreading to every plant anywhere remotely nearby, but oh, it's so pretty. Now we are moving to my bedroom. Here is a quick scan. It used to be way more planty. I'm realizing I like to keep my plants in my like gen, gen pop area where I'm spending a lot more time. This is a room that I used to keep like my dresser and my corner and my nightstands fully, oh, and my windowsill fully stocked of plants. And I realized that I don't spend like enough time in here throughout the day to take care of everything in here. So I have moved most of what was in here onto like the plant shelf or downstairs. So you'll see most of the plants that used to be up here downstairs in my office or project room. Yeah, so things are pretty minimal now. It feels really nice and a lot more relaxing to me. And that's the thing I realized like, even though I love a planty home, I can have a planty home without, without like stocking every surface of my house with plants. That was just not something I could keep up with care wise anymore. So yeah, I'm really glad I've started to minimize some rooms of my house, but I did my best to be tidy, but <laughs> this is as good as it gets around here, okay? I did it for you because I love you even if it's not up to your standards. I tried my best. Um, anyway, on Ryan's side of the bed, on the nightstand, we have a Euphorbia obesa, which is a very phallic little thing. <laughs> Underneath this Hero Aquatics Grow Light, we each have one of these on our nightstands and I love them because they're kind of dual purpose. They're a kind of night stand light. You know, in the evening time, the last light you turn off in the house, if you're like reading a book or taking notes of something or doodling, whatever you're doing, love these lights. They also double as a girl light because they are a girl light. I think they were well worth the money, although they are definitely a splurge. And off to the side, I have my yucca cane. Honestly, I did think died completely back, but it evidently didn't. This one stalk <laughs> survived um, being outside last summer. So yeah, this spring, 100%, this bad boy will be repotted. And yeah, I'm just going to toss these other two branches because I'm, because they haven't even tried to grow anything since last summer. So I'm pretty sure they're rotted out but this plant is so cute. It direct opposite side of the room. This is our mine and Ryan's dresser. And Ryan actually built this from scratch, which yeah, I mention every single time I show anything in my bedroom, but I just think it's so cool he built that with his bare hands and a tree, some wood. So cool. Schlumbergera truncata, which for some reason is very, very confused right now. And it is popping blooms, even though this is the Thanksgiving one that typically blooms around Thanksgiving time. Um, you can see back, like back here, there are more blooms, especially. So weird. I don't really know what's going on with that, but hey, I'll take it because I love the blooms. I think it's because this grow light is so awesome. And these are the, what grow lights are these? These are the mother official. I have a philodendron ergosum, which is one of my favorite philodendrons. I love the fact that it's growing on this gnarly, weird plank of wood. Ryan brought this home for me to put my plants on and I've really, really enjoyed it. So that was such a cool, good idea on his part. This is the football textured philodendron. So I love it. And it fills in that little corner just enough, makes it just enough planty to make my bedroom planty without it being too much. Anyway, and then here in this little glass orb, I keep a, 
terracotta with my silver hero syndapsis. Yeah, I didn't even notice till right now that it looks like it fell down the dresser. I should pull that out. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, like half of that was down the dresser. So I think this is one I'm going to chop up and try to make a more full pot of here soon. Uh, Cause right now, yeah, that's looking very, very, very awkward. And on the other side of the room, my side of the room, I have my Soltec Solutions Grow Light stand thing is also from Soltec. I have this Passiflora trifasciata plant growing on it, which went dormant for winter and you can see it killed off all of its leaves. But now that it's getting warm and bright again, it's putting out some new growth, which I feel very, very good about. Um, I also have another sport variegated Monstera. This is the sister cutting of that plant you saw in my kid's bathroom. Just hoping for some brighter variegation like that one. So I chopped everything up to try and get some better, I don't know, some better variegated leaves. We'll see. Kind of looks awkward there, but I don't really care as long as it grows in well and then I can move it somewhere else. Probably my favorite plant in like my whole collection is my Monstera Albo right here because it is just such a big full plant. All of the leaves are gorgeous. I've chopped and propped this thing so many times and the babies you see down here at the base of the plant are propagations from, yeah, chopping this plant back so many times. So I love the way this is filling in and I've worked really, honestly, I've worked really hard to get this to grow in as full as it is. So. I've chopped and propped and rooted and repotted this thing so many times to get it to be what it is now. So feeling very, very happy about it. And right next door, we have a very dead leaf. This is my Anthurium waraquianum, which lived in my grow tent. Um, and I thought I'd try to grow it up here because I do really like this plant, although I'm not an anthurium gal. I don't know why this thing isn't growing in very well. Like the new leaf came in with a hole in it, which is so weird, but I'm just glad it put out a new leaf, but it put out a new leaf and killed off the old one. So any of you anthurium lovers out there, I would really appreciate some insight, feedback, what I could do to prevent that from happening again because I do love this plant so much and I would love to have more than one leaf at a time. <laughs> uh, all right, so there is my little plant corner, my little plant corner and on the windowsill just here, I have a Hoya rotunda flora in just this little sphagnum moss vase. Oh my gosh, my chickens are so freaking cute, you guys. There's the rooster over there, the little black one bopping across the fence there. Oh, I love them so much. And in my bathroom is my neon pothos, my hanging one, which I consider my mother plant that I chopped and propped five months, four months ago or something. But here are all the little babies. I, this pot is doing really, really well. So is this one, but for some reason this one, it seems like a lot of things have rotted in it and I've just kind of put off taking care of it. I think that's something I'm going to do outside once it's a little bit warmer. So stay tuned for that. I'm gonna pull everything out and like clean it out and all of that, but everything else is doing really well. I'll pull these ones out to show you because they are so well rooted. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely time to get these potted up. I might let this pot, I might let this planter and this planter live in the water for a little bit longer because they're doing okay. But yeah, something needs to change over here. And I think that that's a planter. I would like to pot one of those other plants in I told you needed to be repotted. So um, yeah. Good morning. So it is super early the next day. I, I lost daylight. It got super cloudy, rainy. So I, there just wasn't light to finish showing you these last two rooms of plants in my house. So that's what we're gonna do today. So yeah, this is a room in my basement where I just do like my filming stuff. Plants in here, other than the windowsill plants, don't really have like designated spots. They kind of get moved around 
and in and out of hair a lot, just depending on what I'm currently working on. But starting over here, this is my Ficus Audrey. And it doesn't grow too well for me, honestly, but I'm hoping once I move it outside onto my covered deck this summer, it'll pop out some more growth. Here you guys have seen this plant so many times on my channel. This is my Crassula ovata. I did for the winter time, put it into this corner where it got like no sunlight. It's really dark, right? I mean, it got a little bit of light, but it's pretty dark right there. And I didn't water it hardly at all. Like I watered it maybe once a month. So I'm hoping that since I put the plant through so much stress this cold season, it's gonna flower. <sighs> I really hope. Um, that's like my main goal with this plant. I freaking love that plant. I think it's so cute. It does kind of seem like it is thirsty again. And I have started watering it on a more normal schedule now that things are warming up, brightening up outside. This is a terrarium I put together in a video actually. And then my computer, or not computer, my camera broke and I lost all the footage. It was such a bummer. And yeah, it doesn't look like much right now, but this begonia is kind of filling in already, but once the Selaginella starts going and all the mosses and then the begonias in the back get tall, it's gonna look so cool and so rainbowy and so vibrant. So I'm very excited for that to happen. All right, on the floor here in a boot tray, I have a bunch of plants bottom watering. So this is a baby monstera that I propagated. I have my moss pole plants in here. This is a philodendron brantianum, which I put on a moss pole about a year ago. I did just move it in here to bottom water and I actually am really enjoying seeing it almost every day. Whereas before when it lived in my grow tent, I just kind of didn't get to fully enjoy it, you know? So that's something I have been doing. I've been trying to move. Yeah, that is something I've been trying to do, like bring my plants out of the grow tent and back into my actual house to be enjoyed. I'm trying to make the grow tent more of a business <laughs> plant stuff kind of situation. So that's what's going on. A lot of my plants are moving back into my home, which is really exciting. So. Rai Rai is over here playing with his train. So if you hear clicking, clacking, and really loud stuff in the background, it's him. But I'm sorry, that's just how it has to be right now. <laughs> um, and I never thought I would love a moss pole plant the way I do. But oh my God, you guys. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. Um, this is my Monstera Silta Picana. Another one that I put onto a moss pole the same time I did the Brantianum. And again, this was just little cuttings, but look at these new leaves. They are so beautiful and big. And I just love the like veining kind of texture of these, I guess. God, I hate to say it, but I love these moss pole plants. Are they like the most amazing moss pole plants you've ever seen? No, but hey. They're still pretty, right? Okay, and what I was, what I just realized that I wanted to show you was this freaking Syngonium has a mealybug. Sorry. I will definitely be doing a round of Bonide Systemic on all of the plants in this room. Um, I do just kind of want to do around anyway with spring coming up, but yeah, outside of the mealies, I really like this plant. Like, look at that cool lobe leaf shape. That is so cool. On my windowsill here in my last video, uh, I repotted my Syngonium white butterfly, which is my oldest plant. I'll throw up the throwback photo of what this plant looked like five, six years ago. Um, it was just a single little cutting and it's grown into this all on its own. That's so crazy. It does look really awkward here right now for Syngonium and how they're kind of wonky and weird. It just takes time for them to look not wonky. And sometimes even with time, they still look wonky. <laughs> it's what I love about them, but also it's a little bit frustrating about them sometimes. Here are my little um, succulent Asia Sansevieria I recently unboxed, also in a video. They are just sitting here with like barely any water on their roots just because I haven't had a minute to move on to the next step of their rehab process. So they're just sitting here with some good sunlight. 
hopefully rehydrating, hopefully growing new roots. So I will keep you posted. All of the ones I unboxed, if you're interested in watching, so. Um, okay, this, this is my other codex, which actually got knocked over and I didn't notice it until a couple days ago. Oh, what one is this? I cannot remember what this one is called. Tried to give it a little bit of a winter dormancy. So um, maybe once I get this potted and like situated again, it'll start taken off with the spring just right, right around the corner. That's really what I'm hoping with all of my plants. They have slowed down a lot for the cold season. The last plant up here, I have this, I put this uh, Three King Syngonium. It has kind of creamy variegation. I need to turn you around. Pretty creamy variegation. I love the little pot it's in. It's so cute. This is such an easy, this is one of the easier Syngonium varieties, I think. It just kind of tolerates a lot of different environments and environmental factors, which is nice. Yeah, I don't really have like too much to say about it. Just, <laughs> I think it looks really cute right there. Now we are venturing into my office. <laughs> Let me show you. I have um, a time-lapse camera set up on this table here with a light and my kangaroo fern because I'm doing a time-lapse of this. I posted a little sneak peek of the time-lapse that I've been doing for like almost 10 days now on my last upload, but how I'm currently having to get over to my desk is um, climb through here. <laughs> so that nothing gets bumped. <laughs> it is a bit of, of a pain in the booty and I'm really nervous that my kids are gonna come down here and mess it up. <sighs> I just hope the plant grows fast. Maybe I should have done it in that other room, but lesson learned, I guess. Yeah, it does have a leaf that's starting to unravel, which, ah, ah, I hope the time-lapse looks cool. Oh, my phone's upstairs. Otherwise I would show you what it looks like so far. Uh, anyway, let me take you off the tripod. This is my Norfolk Island pine. It kind of dried up on the bottom little fronds this winter, but all the new growth looks really nice and like juicy kind of <laughs> uh, just very much not dried out like so i don't know if if the older branches are just like aging out or have just aged out or if it's something i did care wise or maybe the cold basement i don't know i don't know but the top looks okay so i kind of feel like I didn't really, I don't know. This is another plant that is at the top of my list to get repotted this spring. This is a, a ficus elastic, hi. <laughs> this is a Bismarck. He's a Cocker Spaniel. He's always up in my business. He's so obsessed with me. This is ficus, my ficus elastica burgundy and it needs repotted so badly. Another one I'm on the hunt for, for the perfect planter. I do think I wanna go quite big with the planter on this one's next up pot because it is growing, now that it's underneath the Soltec Highland track light system, um, grow lights, it has grown really, really fast. So I just think if I moved it into a bigger pot, I maybe wouldn't have to stress about it for a long time. And it's an easy one, so I don't worry about like messing anything up by putting it into too big of a pot. Okay, so on the floor, I have my Passiflora trifasciata because I think I mentioned upstairs that I want to pot this one and my other one together and put them in a more, I don't know, I kind of want to move them somewhere. Like, why are you shaking? You're making me feel bad. What's going on? Is it cold or do you need some cuddles? I feel like you're trying to say a word to me right now. 
The word is just on the tip of your tongue, huh? Anyway, I want to put them both together. Do you think this Dioscoria discolor is going to be my next plant I get rid of? This plant just kind of doesn't do it for me. I, when I bought it, it actually had mealy bugs. My friend Jacqueline got one, well, she got one and then I copied her and got one from the same seller. And both of our plants got mealy bugs, but, um, is that a dead me mealy? What is that? Is that scale? What the hell? Is that a fucking scale? You guys, is this scale? I don't see it anywhere else. That was the only, maybe something like dripped on it or something. I don't know, but both of our plants had mealy bugs and it's just been like a whole ordeal trying to get rid of them. Yeah, it is also a very, very thirsty plant. Like I watered it to, okay, it needs to be repotted. Clearly it's in like a, the tiniest little pot, but I keep complaining about it. I'm just gonna repot the damn thing and then decide from there. That's the moral of that story. <laughs> and I just keep going on and on and on. I never know when to stop talking. This is my Hoya Ganungading. This Hoya Ganungading is in a terracotta right now. I love this plant. This is by far my favorite Hoya. It hasn't bloomed or anything yet. Not really wanting it to bloom because somebody told me it smells like cat piss which don't love that. Yeah, the leaves just get keep getting bigger and bigger, which is really exciting. That one I want to repot just because I don't love how it hangs down, but it doesn't need to be repotted. So it's definitely at the bottom of my spring to-do list. Although it is definitely high on my want to-do list. Here we have another little terrarium full of isopods. Uh, back there is my Begonia Cleopatra that I propagated. I just threw a bunch of little broken stems from my mother plant in the grow tent into here and it kind of grew. Does not like the cold of the basement though, so it died back quite a bit, but I think it'll come back with a vengeance once thing, things warm up. I painted this little planter with fingernail polish <laughs> and put some Hoya Memoria in here. I'm gonna give it to one of my sisters, I think. It is rooted, oh look. New growth point. Oh, you can see it better right there. New growth point, that little tiny red thing. So um, on top of that terrarium is one of my favorite, favorite plants of all in my whole collection. It's the this one here. It's a philodendron giganteum variegated. And yeah, isn't that just so like, beautiful. Wow, the leaves are really big and super mottled and it does need repotted, but I really like the way this looks. Yeah, like those roots are for sure taking over this. Oh, in fact, I think that it's making, I think there's a root sticking out the bottom that's making the plant planter a little bit wobbly. Yeah, so I think this is one that's up there on my repots, but I don't know. I don't know, I might be willing to just water this one every day because <laughs> I really like the way it looks, that whole little setup. So this is the newest leaf. Gorgeous. Ah! Here is a, oh gosh, somebody told me what this was called. It started with a G. It's like a begonia, but my mom gave this to me and I killed it. Well, I thought I killed it. And then she came over one time. Oh no, I just bumped my camera my time lapse, hopefully it's okay. Damn. She came over and we walked around and looked at all of my plants and she gave me a little bit, a little bit of shit for how it didn't have any leaves. And I decided to bring it out here and actually take care of it. So here we are, it's growing, putting out lots of new leaves. It loves the grow light. So that's cool. We love a comeback story, right guys? Oh, and another favorite. I guess I keep a lot of my favorites down here because I do spend so much time down here like editing and yeah, editing. <laughs> anyway, this is my philodendron Jose Buono and um, yeah, definitely needs a repot. This one is like top of the list because I hate the, I hate this terracotta planter. This plant clearly has really big leaves. The variegation can come in so differently 
from leaf to leaf, even on the same plant. Like, isn't it wild that this, this, and this leaf are all growing on the same plant? They just look so different from one another. This plant is one I very highly recommend to you because it's easy, like, it's, it's a, it's one of those plants that has a high reward, low, like payout kind of situation. Like it can tolerate a lot and it also can grow in so incredibly beautiful. So pretty and so weird. Wow. Wow. It's really cool. In front of that, I have Pakira Aquatica galaxy it's the like speckly variegated one mine kind of reverted a little bit and i don't know i'm this plant i'm not very good at keeping like it'll grow new leaves but then just drop the old ones like i think it's about to try and drop this one probably because it's cold down here again i moved it down here because it started to warm up and i wanted it to be under the grow light and see if that would help it but then it got really cold we got a snowstorm out of nowhere and it got cold so i think that that's maybe what's going on but we're just gonna move that out of the way and i just don't have it like yeah i don't love it sitting right here maybe when it warms up i'll be able to find a better situation but i do freaking love this planter it's actually a wine chiller okay so i guess this is my display of dead leaves <laughs> Don't know why. This, this is a Syngonium ribbon. Again, another favorite of mine. I love the long lobe leaves, right? Like, isn't that such a beautiful plant? <laughs> yes. I'll answer for you. Yes, it is. Oh my God. Next to it is my Monster Thai Constellation, which I am thrilled about this plant because I bought one in the past and I root rotted it pretty easily. Like it was a little bit too easy for me to root rot it. So I was super nervous about this one, but it has grown so much. Like when I got it, all the leaves were about this size. Um, it did drop a couple of the older leaves, but the new ones are coming in so beautiful. I just, oh look, there's another one on the way love to see it i love to see it you can like see the tip of the leaf right there that root that aerial root is crazy oh my god i cannot believe i just did that i bumped my grandma's begonia which i'll show you in a minute and broke off this whole top part of the plant actually I think it looks better now. <laughs> it was leaning so much and now it's not leaning as much. Maybe that was a blessing in disguise. Um, I'm gonna stick it back into the pot. We'll do that in a minute once we get to the plant. I wanna finish showing you the dresser stuff. And I can hear my kids are going crazy upstairs. Hope they're not getting into anything, but hey, we do what we gotta do to pay the bills, right? So thank you for watching this video. <laughs> Thank you. It's nestled in front of the Monstera Thai constellation. I have this, which is a Hoya Wybergier. I want the leaves to get sun stressed because when the variegation on these gets sun stressed, they turn, they come in kind of hot pink, which is really, really pretty. And it, it has thrown out a lot of stem without leaves lately, which Hoyas do that. They do that and it's normal, but I'm hoping that by moving it down here, it can maybe maybe start doing leaves oh look it's putting out a new leaf right there that is a very very fresh leaf definitely since i've moved it down here oh there's some up here too look oh you see those teeny tiny little leaves on the side of the stem there oh cool i do think that was the right move then because it's doing what i wanted it to do <laughs> that's cool and yeah i need to find a trellis for this this is my sansevieria blue clone variegated blue star clone variegated or something like that in my little in this little pixie blood creep planter myrtillo cactus titty cactus as some would say which i spoke about during the winter time was not doing well at all it and i i do i think i underwatered it like 
so badly um, because now that I've sat it in this little pixie blood planter with some water, it is getting roots. You can see all of those white fluffy roots and it is um, starting to expand where, I mean, yeah, like it looks very wrinkled right now, but even before that, it just looked so dehydrated, so sad. I think the soil was hydrophobic from being out in the hot sun all summer. So this plant just needs more water than I expected it needed. And it does, it just lives in water right now. Doing, doing well, clearly new roots on this little like side table. This is one of my favorite plant things in my whole house. It's a leadhead glass terrarium. And I just have some sphagnum moss that I revived. This like fluffy stuff down here is. And then I put an oxalis. A little, cute little oxalis. And that is my ponytail palm. I love this plant, but it is a little bit of a boring one because it doesn't do much. Like it doesn't grow very fast, but isn't that cute? This is my Abutilon Thompsonii, which is not looking too hot down here. This is all the winter growth. Now that it's warming up, this is the spring season growth. So I think I'm gonna chop the tops off of all of these and pot them up for the spring. Um, just kind of start fresh because I've had some issues with this knocking, being knocked over a few times. And, and oh, I will say this plant does not like to dry out. Like if you let it dry out too much, all of the leaves are gonna fall off. And that's what happened down here. It just happens like that. So gotta be a little bit on top of this one. This is the one I just knocked a piece off of and I'm kicking myself, but maybe it was a blessing in disguise because I have been wanting this to fill in a little bit more. Um, and I will say in my last upload, I did notice that it's getting a new growth point, which is really exciting. Is that another one right there? It's actually getting two, one stem. Two stems, yay. So this plant is clearly like loving its life, right? Since I knocked this piece off, I'm just gonna, let's see. I'm just gonna stick it in the dirt as far down as I can get it to go without breaking it. Yeah, this is, this is a stem that I accidentally broke off like a few months ago and it is rooted in here now. So yeah, really, really easy to propagate. Next to that begonia, I have my Raphidophora cursiva, which was growing really well for a long time until probably about when it started to get cold where I live. And now it's just thrown out these long runners um, and hasn't put out a leaf in a long time. So I don't know if it's because it's like taller than the wall now and it didn't have enough support to put out new leaves or if it was just too cold for new leaves during the winter. It kind of looks like that may end up being an actual leaf, which would be really exciting. But if I get through this spring season and it hasn't put out a leaf yet, I think I'm going to chop this plant back to where the last leaf was. So like here and like, well, maybe here or the one below it, I don't know and we'll see what happens. That's kind of looking leaf-like to me. This one looks like it tried. One of the plants that is on my like to get rid of next list, if I do decide to downsize a little bit more, I mean, don't get me wrong, I do kind of like how weird it is, how it just like bloop, bloop, and then leaves, but it does, it's just a little bit of a temperamental plant and it drops its leaves anytime I move it or, you know, I, I swear even if I water it with like too cold of water or... I'm starting to realize that I don't think I really like ficus plants that much other than the elastica um, and my umbelata. Those two I absolutely love, but these like bigger leaved ones and like fiddle leaf I don't love. I don't know, maybe they're just not... Did I say this was ficus altissima? I'm gonna stop yapping. Aloe vera, put out this baby last fall. 
cute plant. And that's one I'll move outside for the spring. Uh, this, uh, this is another one I tried to give a little bit of like a stressful winter in hopes that it would pop a new ball this year. And I do actually think it might end up doing that. That's what I, I think that's what this little fuzzy circular shaped thing is right here. Um, anyway, that's how this ball started when it first started to grow. So that may end up being a fresh ball, which would be really cool, but it is a little bit thirsty and you can see cause it's like deflating a little bit and getting those really deep wrinkles. I just love plants that have signs like that that tell me when they're thirsty. This is a Haworthia, but I don't know what kind it is. Put out that little baby last year and it's pretty clear how quickly it's pushing out new growth lately because all of this lighter colored growth is new in the last, like I would say month, month and a half maybe two months, but yeah. And then it kind of darkens over time. So this is a really pretty plant. Oh, love it. If you guys know what this one is, I would really appreciate appreciate an ID on it. And next to it is another Sansevieria Masoniana, something, something, okay? This one has yellow stripes. And I want to repot this. I think this would look really cute in like an orb planter or something. I just think it would make it a little bit more, I don't know. I just think it would give it a little something because right now it looks a little bit awkward to me. And even though I love the plant, it just makes me not like the plant as much because I don't know, I just don't love that. I just don't love the look of that whole little getup. So yeah, hoping for a new leaf soon, but this one is a Dracaena Reflexa. Really like the weird shape of this. It looks kind of florally or something to me, how it's just like a little stem and then just like a burst of plant. I love that. I love that shape in a plant. This one is just so bright and stands out. Even though it's such a small plant, it just stands out so much in my collection because it is so vibrantly colored. It's a really easy one. Dracaena are awesome. This one is getting very droopy because it is thirsty. So usually the leaves are a little bit more like up, like it's more like that. It is getting a new leaf right now. This is, oh, did I even say this is a Florida ghost, but mine is not very ghostly. I mean, you can see, oh my gosh, this is so dusty. Oh, you guys, that is so, that is, Wow, I, I hope y'all are judging me really hard right now because that is really dusty. <laughs> I need to spray this one off. Um, anyway, it's a Florida ghost. Mine has reverted a little bit, but you can still see a little evidence of the ghost coloration, like how it's just looking a little bit mottled there. So these leaves start out really light colored when they're new and then they turn darker like this. But Overall, I really like the shape and growth pattern of this plant. I think it looks really cool. This is one I'll probably move back upstairs once I have my shelves in on the sides of the TV in the living room I told you about before. It looks cute on this windowsill. It'll look cute on my shelf upstairs and then I can enjoy it a little bit more. Well, I enjoy it a lot down here too, but I'll be able to see it like constantly upstairs. So yeah, that is the last plant bless any of you that make it to this point, but thank you so much for hanging out with me and taking a little look at my plants, perusing my plants. I am really looking forward to reading through the comments and seeing what all of your thoughts are. Comments, observations, opinions, all of it. Advice, video requests, write a novel, tell me a story. I don't know. <laughs> That's it for this one. I will see you next time. Bye!